I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sounds, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Big hello to the subscribers. Thanks for checking uh, all the episodes out every week with the new interviews that come out every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's great to have you along. Uh, if, if you haven't already and you, you get inspired, please do give the series a rating. That's a huge help from wherever you're listening from uh, to keep the series going. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button right now wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, all the usual places that also includes Spotify and YouTube. You can uh, subscribe in those uh, areas as well. Just uh, type in Kyle Meredith with and hit subscribe. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest is Liz Fair. She has been a hero to so many, a hero to myself. Uh, I have loved her albums from the beginning all the way up through uh, 2010's Fun Style. But it's been a little bit. It's been since that Fun Style record that we've heard new music from Liz Fair. But that all changed recently when she gave us a new single called Good Side that will lead to an album coming out 2020 that she's going to tell us all about. We'll get the details on working with producer Brad Wood, who is part of her debut record, Exile in Guyville, and how she's feeling more experimental on this record, too. Now, this also comes on the heels of her very first autobiography. It's called Horror Stories. It is a unique read. It's not a book about albums. It's not a book about songs. And Liz will explain the concept behind the stories, the darker moments of her life, the moments of bad decisions and and how they resulted in growing as a person. We'll hear about how she put each chapter together like a puzzle piece, and we'll get into some of those chapters as well. One specific one uh, deals with her grandparents' house that she grew up around as a child called Redbird Hollow in the uh, Cincinnati area, a house that had been previously been parts of the Underground Railroad, which is not something that they knew at the time, something they would figure out a little bit later. We'll also hear about uh, how the impact of the 2016 election had on what she wanted to say and how she wanted to say it, and even more specifically, the passing of Prince. That was a real kickstart into getting a new record started, into getting this book going. It's such a great conversation, and I'm honored to be talking with her today, uh, discussing the book Horror Stories and the new single Good Side. It's Kyle Meredith with Liz Fair. Hi, Kyle. It's Liz. Well, I know there's new music, and I want to get to that, but but first let's hit on the book because I enjoyed horror stories so much, which is a weird thing to say considering the topics that you're writing about in it. But let me compliment <laughs> you as an author first. Like, uh, the style of your writing is, is so good, and, and right in the middle of the book I thought it's it reminds me of – have you read any of Patti Smith's books? Because that's what it reminds me of. Of course. Yeah, just kids. You know, I know you mostly as a lyricist, obviously, and, and now I read that you have done stuff before for, for publications, but were you always a, a writer in, in this way? No, it took me a long time to sort of expand my voice into prose. That was something that I worked on for quietly, privately, almost 10 years. This is not the typical musician book. It's not a book about albums. It's not exactly a book about songs. Uh, I, I'd say this is the stories that I'm always a bit more curious about that don't get told a lot of times in, in, in interviews. It's an original concept, what you've done too. How did you come, wh when did you decide to write the book in this way? Well, I um, conceived of it, it's a two-part memoir. So this is horror stories, the first part, and the second part will be fairy tales. And I conceived of it almost as like a yin-yang collection. So these are sort of the dark, subconscious, you know, watery, nighttime, sexual, with a bright spot of truth, hope, and beauty in the center of it. And I just kind of thought that it would be better to break down my life into a cool concept. That's sort of what I'm known for, and that's what I enjoy doing, tackling like a big art concept. So that's sort of how I conceived of it. 
and each chapter is, you know, it's it's its own little pod. It's like a um, a puzzle every single time. The way you lay out a story, it's like you you bait us with a little bit of a hook that kind of drifts into <laughs> another memory, and then somewhere around it comes back around, and it's. Like that's that's the coolest part about reading each one of these because you can almost open it to any random chapter if you wanted to, and it still works as like this mini little movie. Thank you. I feel like it's almost like an album of literature. Uh, <laughs> you absolutely. know what I mean? Like each chapter is almost like an extended song exploring one idea. That's kind of what I'm used to working um, like, and I just applied it to prose. Well, I'll hit on a couple of the chapters here too, a few of them. Starting with chapter two called Below, and I want to say, holy shit, when, <laughs> when, when it drops at the end what you're talking about in this chapter, I was, I was blown away because, you know, here, is, here you are all with your family on a sand dune, and we come to figure out later on that this same dune that you're on ends up swallowing, swallowing a child who ends up living because this is a real story that was, that was in the news. It's so detailed. Did, to remember everything that specifically, did you keep a journal or, or are you like Kerouac as the great rememberer? Well, it's interesting. I learned a lot about myself and how my brain works in writing this book. I actually remember discrete memories and I forget all the other stuff in between. So I have great swaths of time that I don't remember anything from. But the moments that impacted me, whether good or bad, really stuck with me in vivid detail. It's as if my brain recognized a shock, either good or bad, and preserved it for future reference so that I could go back and examine it further. And, the, you know, dark stories are in horror stories and fairy tales will have like the positive, exciting stories. But that's just how my brain works. Hearing you detail like uh, LASIK. <laughs> well, it's like when I when I watched Inception, I freaked out because I'm like, that's me. <laughs> you know, like, I can I can walk into a memory and smell, see, hear, feel it at will, but only certain ones, only ones that had a profound impact on me. I, I loved hearing you detail, you know, the place where you grew up at your parents' house called Redbird Hollow, which I'll point out is right up the road from us. We're in Louisville here, so that's in the you know Cincinnati. Aww, yeah. that's great. The Ohio Valley. And my friend and I, who comes from Louisville, we call ourselves the Ohio Valley Players. <laughs> <laughs> Known for beautiful, uh, beautiful landscapes and horrible allergies. That's that's what we have here. <laughs> <laughs> and wicked tornadoes. That's true. That part's true. But you know, here you have this place that you grew up in, and, and you paint it so magically. And then we find out the actual house was this important moment in the Underground Railroad. And and reading about losing your grandparents later, is, is that is that whole place out of your family now, or or do you all still have that? No, we don't still have that. And I think in a way that that allure of having like a family home to go back to, I don't know if like it would mean the same thing to us. It was such a childhood playground. It was such a magical play growing up and running in those woods but I think that lent like a good insight into the way my mind works because I really did have freedom as a child which certainly my son didn't benefit from growing up in Los Angeles you know there was there was room for the imagination to bound if you will I always I always tell my son that uh, boredom is a gift you know <laughs> right Right. You know, what you can do out there to, to have those moments. The world is just filled with too many, you know, too many things coming into us all the time. Is swat away the ads, swat away the commercials, <laughs> deal with, you know, checking into security, <laughs> whatever you've got to do. It's pretty overwhelming. It, it's nice to stop and just take the quiet moment and really, like, remember what that feels like. That, that spot there, it, it seems like that would be on a historical registry at, at this point, you know, to, to have been something like that. I mean, it may have been. It certainly may have been. That was something that we discovered when my grandparents did work on the house. It wasn't until an architect came in and they were expanding their room that they discovered this um, hiding space for men and women fleeing slavery, slavery in, I don't know, the 1800s, 1700s. It's just incredible. It really was. Yeah. Uh, I should also point out, you know, as you talk about the you know, horror stories versus what's coming up fairy tales, which I didn't know about that. I'm very, very excited about that. That's a nice little treat. But it should be said in this concept that we haven't said, like these, you are, you are giving us these moments that of your lesser self. Uh, is that the right way to put it? Like, you know, these aren't your most shining moments, right? These are often 
times actions I've taken that fall outside the bounds of what I consider my character and that I have been haunted with regret about. Like, you know, some of the stories are things that happened to me or things that I witnessed, but there's a lot of them in there that's kind of an accounting. And what that sprang from was the 2015-2016 election when I was pointing my finger at the television and condemning people or condemning like views that I was seeing. And inevitably that forced me to look at myself and wonder how I would fare under that kind of scrutiny. What have I done that has been out of line with my values, you know? And it, so it just it just spurred this whole sense of what are my core values? When have I acted within them? And when have I acted outside of them? It's really a book about being human. I guess I'm writing about what it's like for me as a person, not just as a rock star. Mm-hmm. There's a song that opens up your, your record, Fun Style, called Smoke, and, and, and the character asks, one of the characters asks, what's in the box? And you say, my little voice of self-doubt. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and this is an obvious, I, I feel like maybe this is an obvious question, but, you know, as we as you progress into the book and you talk about going through surf therapy and, and that being one of the things that really helps you out, how important was, I guess, your current states, whatever that might be, uh, to be for you to write this book? Like, could you have written this book at any other time? No, I could not have written this book at any other time. I think there's something about crossing the threshold of 50 that, you know, suddenly you realize you're not a kid anymore. No one's going to be fooled. And you see the horizon and things start to get crystallized in your mind. And you do start to think, you know, what's important? What's important to me? And what do I want to convey to people? It was actually after Prince died. My manager called me. It's a really awkward phone call because Prince died and I was on the road with the Smashing Pumpkins performing solo in opera houses across the country. And he said something like, Liz, you know, like, uh, none of us knows how much time we have. You don't know. You could be gone tomorrow. And I'm like, I feel pretty healthy. But he was thinking, and he said to me, you know, are you making the work you want to be making if it was the last thing you left behind? Because everyone was thinking about how much Prince still had in him to give and how much we wanted to hear that. And I thought, no, I'm not actually making the work that I would want to leave behind if it was the last thing I ever did. And I, I, I shifted and I changed. And it, it, it clarified for me something really important about being an artist and how much I want to express myself. And I changed tack. It's amazing how much influence Prince had on us during his life and after his life. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't even realize how important he and Bowie and Tom Petty and all the people that we lost were to me until they were gone. They were really fixed stars in the firmament as far as I was concerned. And they gave me a lot of permission to be free because they were so much farther out there, you know, like the super upperclassmen. It, it also is a good uh, uh, moment to remember to to celebrate, the, you know, the ones we that inspire us while they're actually here, you know, because I think oh, that... Yeah happens a lot that it's afterward i think we all feel that though now yeah absolutely well that uh, I'll, I'll tie that in so you you have a new single it's called good side it is so great to hear new music from you i enjoyed fun style uh, it's been a long time in the rear view though and you know for a lot of us fans we've been like okay much like your manager i think we're like hey hey where is it but now you've given us this <laughs> single how does this single speak to the book um, they're not really connected in the sense that, like, is there an actual conceptual tie-in? But I did go back and work with Brad Wood, my original producer, on Exile and Guyville. And I did think about, you know, when was I making my best work? What was the best challenge that I set myself in the past? And working with him was really that for me. And so I did go back and revisit that kind of sound. And I wanted, I was curious to see what kind of music we would make you know, 25 years later. And we tried to come up with something that didn't sound like anything we've done before, but was still very us. And we're even getting Casey Rice, who was the original guitar player on Exile and Guyville, to throw in some hooks all the way from Australia. So it'll it'll have like a real resonance with the past, but at the same time, it'll be wholly new. They're, in they're, fact, it's finished. I just have to put one more song on it and a couple bells and whistles, and we're done. We're mixing part of it now. So 2020 release, probably, I'm yep, guessing. Yep, early yeah. 2020. No, definitely. There, there was a recent uh, uh, Veruca Salt article that came out, and, and I guess Brad had also recorded their first one, and there's a hilarious part there where I, I forget which, which one of the uh, the band members was talking about how Brad wouldn't shut up to them the entire time about how he was recording your record and how great that was going. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think, you know, he can be Charlie and we can be Charlie's angels. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. 
with 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 this single good side so obviously this is the only one we've heard for the new record right now it, it also seems to place sort of a dual purpose it, you know lyrically maybe like a, a you know a public persona and always having to be on not just the literal hey here's the good side of my photo i think it's really more about maturity in relationships instead of fucking running i'm saying hey let's stop it here while we both still like each other because we we know this isn't really going anywhere and before feelings get hurt let's just stop before anyone behaves badly and just have this cap encapsulated moment that we can always remember and you know that's that's maturity yeah well, does the, uh, the the rest of the album speak to similar themes? I mean, um, you know, you talk about obviously the election and everything sort of being a turning point uh, along with Prince. Does that make its way in as so many artists are finding ways to or how to reflect that in their music? I don't know. I don't know if I've reflected Prince in my music. I really pretty much always reflect myself as I can. And the record gets a little stranger from here. I was pretty experimental with song structures and sounds. So Good Side is kind of like my ambassador. Hi, hello, how are you? And then I'll take you into a little deeper and twistier journey. It's even more exciting. I'll end with, uh, I, I sort of want to get your take on this. When you open the book, Horror Stories, there's a, an Edgar Allan Poe quote. It says, I was never really insane except on occasions where my heart was touched. And that's an interesting, I, I, could you explain that a little bit, what that means to you? That means passion makes us mad, and it's both the most attractive thing. He's clearly not saying sorry about that. He's just explaining that when he's passionate about something, he does go a little mad. It does pull you out of the day-to-day, and it's almost like a super realm, the heart, when you're really feeling something. And it isn't always linear or something comprehensible. You act with feeling. And there's your definition, as, as those <laughs> quotes are supposed to do, I suppose. Uh-huh. Liz, I, I, I'm so grateful for your passion, for everything you've given us so far musically and for this book. I cannot wait for the follow-up for the fairy tales, but I seriously am so looking forward to the album because Good Side is a great first, uh, first bite of this one. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this. Take care, and we'll see you around. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Kyle. All right. Bye. Bye. And my thanks to Liz Fair for that call right there. Uh, Again, the book is called Horror Stories. That's the one out now. Looks like we have another one to look forward to soon called Fairy Tales. The single that's currently available is called Good Side. And thanks to you for checking out the episode here and the series as well. As I mentioned, if you if you feel inspired to, to leave a review or a comment or, or give the series a rating, that always goes uh, really, really far in helping out the, the, the whole podcast here. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Acast, Stitcher, Podchaser, any of those places, as well as areas like Spotify and YouTube. And after that, You can head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and even more interviews. That's WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, and Facebook, slash Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.